What's up, everyone? Welcome to the November 7th edition of the NBA Injury Report brought to you by BetMGM. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. And we have every single team in action tonight, 15 NBA games. And as a result, we have a lot of injuries to get to in this video. But first, click the link in the description below, sign up, create an account with BetMGM, and place a real money wager. You'll receive up to a $1,000 risk-free first bet on that paid wager, in addition to two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum. So click that link below, take advantage of this offer. Now getting into the injuries, starting with the Charlotte Hornets. Dennis Smith Jr. is questionable. He left their last game relatively early on. Jaden McDaniels started the second half in his place. It's likely that if Smith Jr. misses this game, McDaniels would get a start again. He struggled the last time he started, but he's been about a .9 fantasy point per minute guy this year, and playing additional minutes would look like a decent value tonight. For the Houston Rockets, Kevin Porter Jr. is questionable. If he is out, there's a variety of options that could replace him in the starting lineup. Deshaun Nix has been his primary backup, but you could also get Jalen Green moving to the point with Josh Christopher playing, Kenyon Martin Jr., you know, moving into the starting lineup. Uh, you could get Garrison Matthews in the starting lineup. They could do a bunch of different things, but Jalen Green would most likely see a lot more usage if uh, Kevin Porter Jr. is out. It would also probably bump the production for Alperin Shangun, and then it would open up more minutes for some combination of those guys, uh, whether it's Nick starting or Kenyon Martin Jr. starting. For the Indiana Pacers, not huge names here, but Aaron Naismith and um, Andrew Nemhard are both questionable. The reason this matters is because Chris, Chris Dorte is already out. In their last game, um, Naismith was out. Nemhard played like 28 minutes off the bench. Uh, Benedict Matherin started the second half and played 36 minutes. If both Nemhart and Naismith are out, Matherin's very likely to start this game and play a lot of minutes. We know he's a good fantasy producer when he's out there. If Naismith's back, there's a chance that he's in the starting lineup. Matherin still probably plays a lot of minutes, but probably fewer than if he starts. Uh, but if both of these guys are out, you're getting really short on the wings for Indiana, and the rookie would most likely play a lot of minutes. For the Philadelphia 76ers, Joel Embiid is once again questionable. He went through shoot around, but has not been confirmed in yet. In the last game that he missed, we did get a start from Montrez Harrell. He played about 29 minutes. If that happens again today, he projects as a solid value in Embiid's absence. You also get increased production for all of Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris, and DeAnthony Melton if Embiid were to miss this game. For the Atlanta Hawks, Trey Young is questionable. If he is out, DeJounte Murray becomes absolutely fantastic. Murray's good regardless, but he becomes even better if Young is not in there. You also would probably see a bump in production on a per-minute rate for John Collins. Tyler Hero is questionable for Miami. If he is out, we should see more minutes from Max Struess. We also should see increased production from Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Kyle Lowry. For the Portland Trailblazers, Anthony Simons is doubtful after missing their last couple of games, but Damian Lillard is questionable. If Lillard comes back, he's cheap enough on both DraftKings and FanDuel that gambling on his price and hoping he plays big minutes um, – isn't a bad idea, but he would take a lot of the value away from the rest of this team since they are priced for Lillard to be out and to some extent for Simons to be out at this point. If Lillard misses this game, they still are relatively correctly priced, but it is an uptick in usage for Yusuf Nurkic. It's an uptick in playing time and ball handling responsibilities for Justice Winslow. Josh Hart looks better. Keon Johnson becomes a viable punt option if you want to go that route. For the Chicago Bulls, Zach Levine questionable. He sat out yesterday on the front end of a back-to-back, -back, but they haven't confirmed, confirmed him in yet for tonight. If he does play, then it takes usage away from everybody else, but it could potentially actually help DeMar DeRozan a bit. The Raptors were extremely aggressive in throwing double doubles or double teams, not double doubles, at DeMar DeRozan yesterday. As a result, he only had nine field goal attempts. If Levine is in, then one of two things happen. Toronto can't double DeRozan as aggressively as they were, or Zach Levine goes nuts as the secondary scorer on the Bulls. Um, but if he's in overall, it's just going to make everyone project a bit worse for Chicago. Conversely, if he's out, you're getting a lot of minutes for Alex Caruso again. You, in theory, get a bump in usage for DeRozan, although with the way Toronto played him yesterday, I don't think that would be the case. And you get a bump in usage for Vucevic as well. For the Utah Jazz, we don't have an injury report yet, but I'm considering Mike Conley questionable. It's the second half of a back-to-back. -back. The Jazz have had two back to back so far this season. Conley played the first one. He sat the second one. In the second one, that was the game that Colin Sexton started, played a ton of minutes, and ever since then, we've seen Sexton be in the closing lineup and playing a lot of minutes. My theory is that they weren't ready to run Sexton a lot of minutes yet in their first back-to-back, -back, so they went ahead and played Conley, and that now they're probably going to be more judicious with 
Conley's playing time and they'll be more, they're more free to rest him on back to backs since Sexton is at full strength. That's not based on anything other than me guessing though. So I am considering Conley questionable. If he's out, Colin Sexton becomes one of the absolute best plays on the slate at a sub 5k price tag. Uh, if Conley is in Sexton, still a really good play, just not as good. So to recap the big pieces of injury news that we're waiting on right now, Dennis Smith jr. Is questionable for the Hornets. Kevin Porter jr. Questionable for the Rockets. Aaron Naismith and Andrew Nemhard questionable for the Pacers. Joel Embiid, questionable for the Sixers. Trey Young, questionable for the Hawks. Tyler Hero, questionable for the Heat. Damian Lillard, questionable for the Blazers. Zach Levine is questionable for the Bulls. And I am considering Mike Conley questionable for the Utah Jazz. Uh, I did forget Jared Vanderbilt also questionable after missing yesterday's game. If he is out, you should get Malik Beasley in the starting lineup playing more minutes and uh, more solidified minutes for Kelly Olynyk as well.